In today's video, we will be discussing three more reasons why your blood pressure may be elevated and some very simple ways to fix the issues. Let's get into today's content. Normal blood pressure was considered 120 over 80. And for those patients that were considered hypertensive, the range was typically 140 over 100. If you were diabetic, we were a little bit more stringent on the blood pressure, and I think the number was somewhere around 130 over 85. So it is important to know that when your clinician, when your provider is taking your blood pressure, we really want to understand what those two numbers are actually talking about. So the first number in this equation, the top number or the systolic number, is the amount of pressure that your blood vessels are feeling, essentially, when your heart is contracting. And so the top number, again, that systolic number, really gives us an indication of how well your blood vessels are doing, what their, what their integrity is. The bottom number, or the diastolic number, I always think of diastolic D as uh, the number on the bottom or down below, is when you're heart is at rest, but there is still pressure being forced against your blood vessels. When the diastolic number is elevated, that is typically an indicator, in my opinion, on kidney function. We're going to look at kidney function in a future video, so please stay tuned for that. But it is something to keep in mind that if diastolic number is elevated above 80, I would encourage you to work with your provider on assessing your kidney function and seeing if that is contributing to your high diastolic number. Let's get into the three reasons why blood pressure might be elevated, and I'm mainly going to focus here on systolic blood pressure, high blood pressure. And let's look at those reasons and see what we can do to possibly fix those from a non-medication standpoint. So reason number one why your blood pressure might be elevated is due to a nutritional deficiency in B vitamins. Now, B vitamins are mainly water-soluble. There are a few out there that I would argue are also fat-soluble. Having a deficiency in B vitamins can lead to uh, inappropriate muscle tone and basically uh, an excited nervous system. And so, again, something as simple as taking a B complex or the proper fat-soluble B vitamins can sometimes lower blood pressure if your systolic blood pressure is elevated. The second reason why you might have elevated blood pressure is due to a buildup, essentially, of fatty acids in your blood. Blood should be water-like or very fluid, and when we have a high level of fat in the blood, that can, again, make that, that blood thick and then ultimately leading into more pressure against the blood vessel walls. So what are, the, what are some of the reasons that cause thick blood? Well, diabetes is one. It's a classic example of having thicker blood, and that also leads to a lot of inflammation when you have too much insulin floating around in your blood vessels. Another reason could be either kidney or liver dysfunction. Uh, a fourth reason uh, would be low thyroid function. So when we have low thyroid function, again, the way I think of it is our body metabolism is slow, and that can lead to an underproduction or an, I should say, an underutilization of the fatty acids that might, be in our, that might be in our bloodstream. Whatever the case may be for having too thick of blood, something to consider is using a fat emulsifier. So there's something out there called soy lecithin, and that has been used as a fat metabolizer to help thin the blood. Again, I would encourage you to work with your provider to assess if you have Again, thicker blood. We're trying to achieve blood in our blood vessels that is very fluid-like. Let's look at the third reason for a possibility of having hypertension. The third reason why we might have high blood pressure is due to basically an overproduction of adrenaline. We might be that person that is constantly under stress. Our body is in this sympathetic overload of fight or flight, we're always on the go. We might even feel that um, we're not having too much energy energy because we're constantly in this battle. 
and we're getting burnt out. So if this is someone that describes you, I would again encourage you to work with your provider on a, assessing your, your sympathetic output. And there's a couple different ways we can do that. Here at the pharmacy, we certainly can do an, a neurotransmitter or basically measure your epinephrine and norepinephrine outputs through a test here. And we can also look at cortisol output as well too, which influences our sympathetic tone. So if we are somebody that again is just under fight or flight, and we have, we're just completely revved up, or we might even be that person that's been revved up so long that we're just wired and tired all the time. I would encourage you to work with your provider or call the pharmacy. We have multiple different ways to, again, assess sympathetic output, and then we have many different options depending on what those results show us as far as possible fixes. I hope you found value in today's video. If you did, Again, as always, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. We are looking for the most optimal way from a non-medication standpoint, if at all possible, to achieve your health outcomes. And again, if you found value in today's video, I would encourage you to share this video with a loved one. In next week's video, we are going to get into uh, cholesterol and statin drugs and again, some possible natural alternatives that you may find helpful. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.